Is it possible for a camera brand to make you love photography again if you've lost that sort of lust to take photographs, that enjoyment, that that sort of energy that you get from being a photographer? If you've lost that feeling, that sort of that love, that, that thing that makes you want to get out of bed in the morning and just go and take photographs just for the sake of taking photographs, can a camera brand actually change the way that you feel about that process in my experience yes it can and for me it's fujifilm that's made me love photography again so before i talk about how fujifilm as a brand their ecosystem the way they design the cameras etc etc before i sort of go into detail about why i think uh, Fujifilm as a brand has basically been able to revolutionise for me the way that I go about my photography, the way I enjoy photography, the way I sort of approach it as a hobby. It's best probably to, to look back at my history with photography and sort of how I came into this world. Um, it's not something that I uh, discovered recently. It's not a hobby I sort of decided to pick up because I was bored over uh, during lockdown. Actually, this is something I've been doing for a very long time. When I left school, I went straight into full-time employment. Um, I didn't go off to university. I didn't go traveling. I went straight into full-time employment. And that was working for a company called Warehouse Express, better known to UK buyers now as Wex Photo or Wex Photo Video. They, next to Jessup's, were the biggest photo retailer of the time. And, it's, and I think probably are now the biggest in the UK, as far as I'm aware, certainly one of the biggest uh, photographic retailers. I started there taking just normal phone calls, sales orders, doing finance, etc. I'd been there about six months. I decided to buy myself a digital camera, uh, a power shot, a Canon PowerShot S30, I think, if I remember rightly. Uh, a little point and shoot, a digicam, as the kids call them now. Um, and I got that home and I just started taking photographs of the pet and the house and my car and um, flowers in the garden and stuff. And then I started to edit those photographs and print those photographs and it very very quickly spiraled into this sort of this um this little passion and uh, it helped the fact that i was working for a company that sold all this gear so i used to get a good discount and i was always surrounded by it and you know there was a good interest so i developed this passion for the stuff very quickly uh, and then age 19 um I was asked by a family friend to photograph their wedding. They'd seen some of my sort of snaps that I'd done and bits that had been sort of left lying around the house and they decided that they wanted me to photograph their wedding. Madness, but at the time um, they thought it was a good idea. And I refused a few times, but eventually said yes. Uh, borrowed a, a digital SLR from, where, from Warehouse Express at the time and I went and photographed their wedding. Now, if I look back at those photographs now, I don't even know if I still have them. They were terrible by my current standards. But at the time I thought, yeah, this is pretty good. This is fun. And I thought, yeah, great. I've got a new vocation slash hobby thing that I can do for fun and might, might earn me a bit of money. Um, and I spent the next three years under the tutelage of a couple of local wedding photographers working for them as a as a second or third shooter and just earning a bit of extra cash, basically learning the craft. I bought my first digital SLR, a Canon 20D. And um, yeah, I basically just, I read everything I could. I, I experimented. Um, I'd take my camera out everywhere and I would photograph as much as I can. And I really, really enjoyed the wedding ph photography side of things. I really enjoyed the... Um, sort of lifestyle um, portrait side of photography as well. I phot liked photographing people. Um, but after nearly six, seven, six, seven years of doing weddings, uh, I was in my mid twenties at this point, I was getting a little bit tired of that and I wanted a new, ch I wanted a change of career anyway. So I went into healthcare. I uh, wanted to become a paramedic. Uh, so I set down that road, which meant that I sort of had to abandon my, my, uh, wedding photography because I didn't have my weekends free anymore. I worked more weekends than I didn't, than I wasn't at work, should I say. Um, so I gave up sort of professional photography. I, at the time, by that point, I had Canon 1DSs and Canon 5Ds, L, loads of L lenses, you know, just all the gear, 
some idea and uh you know i i got rid of all of the stuff and i i pared it down uh to to one single canon aps-c body i think it was a canon 60d at the time uh, and then um use that as my sort of every day go out and take the odd shot here or there and i went down to that one lens and it was it's a good camera the 60d for the time it's you know still you know if you look at photographs now it's still great photographs the lens i had with it was a bit lackluster and i didn't really enjoy that and then I kept that for a little while, but then I wanted to do a little bit of video, playing around with video. And at the time, the Sony a6000 was the hot ticket. Uh, so I bought myself an a6000, got rid of the Canon, and I had the a6000 and the 16 to 45 or whatever the kit lens that came with the a6000 at the time. Um, and bit by bit, that whole process of going from you know the canon the really nice canon bodies with a really good quality glass down to having this one small body with a fairly sort of boring lens and not really having a great deal of um, mechanical you know not mechanical but having a not a great deal of sort of photographic um uniqueness i suppose about the way that you go about using the bodies it was just very much almost like it became like a point and shoot i know an a6000 can do way more than that but i used it like a point and shoot and i'd go to i'm a you know big petrohead i'd go to car shows i'd go to family events etc etc and i'd photograph those things but it would literally be snap 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 and i sort of lost the love for photography um, and I stopped doing photography as a hobby. I wouldn't go out just to take photographs, which I used to do all of the time. And yeah, I did, I didn't really notice it at the time, but I'd sort of, you know, photography had gone from being one of my biggest hobbies to being almost nothing in my life other than, you know, the occasional snap. I still preferred using it for, um, uh, you know, for, for recording stuff than using my phone because I still like, you know, I still didn't like the digital, really digital look that phones were, were giving at the time and still do to a degree now. Um, and I did, a, I also sort of do a little bit of writing here or there for, for various websites and, and do some reviews of cars and various other things. So I used to use the camera for photographing stuff for these websites as well. So I do bits and pieces there, but fundamentally I didn't do... Um, I didn't do a great deal with it creatively. And then as I was doing more and more video stuff, I wanted to get something that would do, that would shoot 4K, would shoot 4K60 that had good color, had, you know, had a, you know, a mic input, which the A6000 didn't have. All these little things that I wanted to upgrade from. And I looked at the Sony range and then I, you know, ended up on, as we often do, like you probably are now, I ended up on YouTube and I watched tons and tons of videos. And the camera that I settled on that was within my budget, that had the specs that I needed in order to get all of the video features and bits and pieces in was this, the Fujifilm X-T3. Um, at the time, the X-T4 had just been launched, but the X-T3 was a bit of a bargain. I uh, bought it brand new with a 16 to 80 mil lens. And I think I think I paid like £1,399 brand new for both. They were doing a really good deal on it. So um, at the time, great deal. And yeah, I bought it kind of really on recommendation from people on YouTube, but also just on the specs alone. You know, video specs were really, really good. W wasn't really thinking about this from a photography point of view. I wanted to do, I was, you know, video was something that I was learning. I was getting, trying to get better at. And I wanted better quality camera to learn with. But when I got the camera and I started using it, there was it was like a light bulb had gone off in my head. And there was just something about it's not only the design, because people harp on about these uh, top dials on the on the X-T3. Uh, and yes, don't get me wrong, it's a lovely bit of design and it, it is you know fairly, fairly nice to use. It, it's not as intuitive as everyone makes out. I think a traditional DSLR style is probably still better if you are using it for more commercial purposes. But um, it's not just the design, it, there's just something in, about the way that Fuji go about the whole process, the the rendering of the images, you know, see all the film simulations, um, the bits and pieces there, um, they have, have has a feeling, it has, has, has a certain something that gives you a bit of a, a, a enjoyment that other cameras don't seem to, at least for me, don't seem to offer. And uh, that's the reason why I've stuck with them when I've been, you know, still been tempted to go elsewhere. Like, you know, the Panasonic S5 II was launched and 
on paper that for fit for video for the money that's right up my street but i still have stuck with my my fuji systems um you know there's just something about the the way that um, they, they render images in a way that they render color, color that's just completely unlike anything else in the market and the other thing is um, there's something about the lenses as well I really really like the fact that you've got these lovely little like these Fujicron uh, lenses this 35mm f2 for example is like my, it's my favorite lens that I have it's just something really nice about the way that it, it it renders images for the for the size and weight that you get you know it's not the best quality lens in the world but look at it it's absolutely tiny and it makes beautiful beautiful images and I can just sort of throw this in my jacket pocket or in my small, small bag and I can go for a wander um, and I can take some really nice photographs and it's it's made me want to take my camera every time we go for a walk and you know, my girlfriend sort of takes the mick out of me and says because you know every every time we're walking she'll think that she's standing next to me and start talking to me and I'm back there taking a photograph of a leaf or a flower or something you know that's what this range of cameras has done for me it's enabled me to love photography again uh, and as you can see I have quite a collection now so I started with the X-T3 um, I got an uh, X-E3 I think um, very quick short, shortly after that one as a sort of like a, a pocket point and shoot camera not not point and shoot camera but a more portable camera um, I had an X-Pro1 for a little while which I've sold which I deeply regret selling um, I should have kept the X-Pro1 um, and then I got this little XM1 which has obviously got the same sensor as the X-Pro1 uh, but in a much smaller body um, and this is very very cool I don't use it very often but I paid 98 quid for it I'm never going to sell this because it's just a, a lovely little thing to own and it's a nice compact camera and actually my girlfriend uses it from time to time now anyway um, then I got the X-T4 which is what's filming me right now uh, I wanted the IBIS and extra sort of little video capabilities and bits and pieces that that offered um it's debatable as to whether or not it was worth investing given the fact i already have an had an xt3 um but you know it's nice to have the the two bodies and then my most recent and actually my favorite camera that i've owned to date i think um certainly the my most favorite fuji camera that i've had is this the little x xe4 um i love the size of this um it's just so compact uh, and so like fun to use from a just a point you know take out and take snaps kind of point of point of view um the quality obviously is exactly the same for photographs as it is from the xt4 and the xt3 same sensor so from that point of view um i really really love it but i love the size and weight of it uh, and just the look and feel of it um it isn't as good to use as the bigger bodies um the you know the viewfinder is not as good etc etc but um, for what i use this for you know, as a travel sort of um sort of walkabout camera um, I absolutely adore it so yeah so that that's a bit of a ramble I haven't um, you know scripted this video I just kind of had a bit of a think about what I wanted to say and now I've just talk, started talking and uh, here I am but I kind of just wanted to sort of get my feelings onto video about how grateful I am that I've picked the X-T3 uh, several years ago and um, how it has enabled me to really really get back into something that I love doing and that's something I get lots of uh, pleasure from so if you are thinking about either getting back into photography or starting photography and you want a system that you're going to use or maybe not a you're not a professional even though these are very capable of, of, of being used for lots of different professional applications um, and you want to just do something because of the love of it for the fun of it um, then I can certainly recommend the Fujifilm system and um, I think you will really really enjoy it and you'll become like me probably a little bit of a Fujifilm fanboy um, as they like to say so or a Fuji juicer to to uh, quote one of my uh, one of my favorite YouTubers so yeah that's kind of my verbal diarrhea um, of uh, my thoughts on uh, why it uh, why I accidentally picked Fujifilm but how it's managed to make me enjoy photo photography again um, let me know in the comments if there's anything that you've bought or anything that you've tried that has allowed you to seriously uh, enjoy photography again get back into the whole uh, process of taking photographs um, and or let me know what your experiences are with Fujifilm if you're a Fujifilm user um, or just drop me a comment to say hello
Um, either way, um, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. Um, I'd also love if you would like, you know, if you like this video and other videos I've got uh, coming soon, you know, subscribe to the channel, give give me a like, all that YouTube malarkey, you know, the you know the usual stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.